I have my microphone off. Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So tonight, unfortunately, I got some bad news for you guys. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen announces that uh, the U.S. is out of cash, completely out of cash, and very, very, very bad days are coming if the debt ceiling does not get raised by June 1st. We don't have that much time. Less than a month. I want to show you guys this interview she did today and how dire things look and sound and why Bitcoin solves this. So let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Today we had a bit of weakness overall, overall, and of course, there's still worries about banks, bank rescues, and etc. You guys know this, but tonight, this is more dire. In fact, so dire that Jenna Yellen is personally calling CEOs of major corporations and banks in the U.S. to explain how dire the situation is. Imagine if you were, I don't know, CEO of Starbucks and you get a call from Janet Yellen talking about this. I don't know what that's going to accomplish. If she's trying to get corporations to push their, I, I don't know, their local Congress people to vote yes, because maybe they're the big donors to them. I guess that's the, the that's the thinking. Like, how embarrassing is that to hold the, the 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 title of treasury secretary and still have to make house calls. I mean, that's how bad it is, but that's how concerning this situation is, right? So let, 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 let's play this, okay? This is a short clip, but this basically sums down what's happening right now and why it's so, so bad. All right, let me, let me get this ready here. Early June is when we project that we will run out of cash and there is a chance it could be as early as June 1st. Of course, there is a lot of, of uncertainty cash. and I plan to update Congress as new information uh, becomes available, but that's still our current thinking. Are there extraordinary measures you can take around that time or is that it? Well, really, that's it. We have been using extraordinary measures for several months cash. now, and um, our ability to do that is running out, and we will start to run down our cash. And um, our current projection is that in early June, a day will come when we're unable to pay our bills unless Congress raises the debt ceiling. For every, what happens on that day? Let's assume for the sake Listen of argument, it's June Listen 1st. What happens that day if the debt limit has not been extended? Well, Treasury finds itself in a position where we're unable to pay all of the bills that um, come due that day. And um, this would be really the first time in the history of America that we would fail to um, make payments that are due. Um, and, you know, whether it's defaulting on uh, interest payments that are due on the debt or payments due for Social Security recipients or um, to Medicare providers, uh, we would simply not have enough cash to meet all of our obligations. And um, it, it's widely agreed that financial and economic chaos would ensue. So... Basically, she is saying at the end, Armageddon is coming. Armageddon is coming. This will be the first time in U.S. history we are unable to pay our debts. We can't pay interest on the bonds. We can't repay loans. Can't, re, can't give out Social Security. Can't pay Medicare. Armageddon is coming. I mean, this is as bad as it sounds, right? Like, I'm not making it up. This is what she's saying. The U.S. is out of cash. We have no more measures, okay? Come June 1st, if the U.S. does not pay, it's Armageddon, financial Armageddon for the U.S. That's how bad it has become. 
And, you know, here's the thing. We heard about this back in December, January. How come we didn't hear about this until now? Like, less than one month away from this this crucial date. What happened between January and, and April? Like, there was zero peeps about the debt ceiling. But now this is coming up at the very last month. Why is that? Why why is it always the last minute, right? So, is this actually a possibility? Is this so bad that this will not be resolved and that come June 1st, the US is unable to pay its debt for the first time in US history and Armageddon, financial Armageddon comes. I I'm hoping that it's not the case, right? And I'm thinking every congressperson voting is probably thinking uh, we rather raise the debt ceiling than allow that to happen, right? So I am thinking we will raise the debt ceiling. However, it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's just one dam is worse than the other dam because ultimately we raise the debt ceiling by another two trillion. We'll be in the same place in another year or two because we'll press against it every single year. There's two trillion plus worth of debt that we incur as a country. And where is that money coming from? That money printer, right? We don't want the money printer to spend another two trillion dollars. No one wants that. That just robs you of your of your buying power. It's a silent tax that destroys your wealth, right? So you're damned if you do that and you don't. But if you don't do this, it's gonna be much worse, right? We're, you know, a lot of us speculate about this deeper recession, this deep, deep recession that may be coming, maybe even depression. This will be the start of that. If we actually default as a country, it's going to be bad, very bad, very, very bad. So that start of the depression could be coming right around the corner as soon as June. All right. Uh, but here's the thing. This is why this is why we have Bitcoin, right? This is the exact reason why we have Bitcoin. Shatoshi kind of predicted this that eventually the banks will all fail, the governments will all fail, right? And that's why he, she, they created Bitcoin. So even though Bitcoin is down a little bit, some people may be freaking out about Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is not gonna go away. Bitcoin will only get stronger and short-term volatility, yes, still affects Bitcoin. Long-term, you know, I mean, just, just look at what's happening. Look at what's happening on a macro scale. Where else are you going to turn to? You can't really turn to everything because everything's controlled by the government. You take your money out of the banks, you put into to what, bonds? You put it in money markets, they're all controlled by the banks. It's all controlled by the same people, right? So where else do you go park your money? You got to park in something that they don't control, and that's Bitcoin. I mean, that's really it. So long-term prospect of Bitcoin continues to, to be high, and, and that is why long-term holders continue to add to their holdings, and new people are coming in and adding sats and fractional Bitcoin, right? And look at this. This is staggering. Long-term net position change. Look at how, yeah, in, in, in March, yeah, I don't know why. Some people, you know, it could be because there was actually more people that came in the space. But you look at the green on the right side. It's flying up. Flying up. More and more Bitcoiners continue to stack sats at a more rapid pace than ever before. That's what's happening, especially after listening to Janet Yellen. It's no good. No good at all, right? You, you want to opt out of that if you can. The reality is, yes, we're, we're not at the point where everyone could just ditch banks and go all into Bitcoin. But it's certainly a turning point, a pivot point, you could say, where people are now starting to recognize that something is wrong. And for the first time ever, they're able to pivot away into something better. We're at that pivot point right now, just the start of it. And it's only gonna continue. And that funnel is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, driving more and more people into Bitcoin. 
That's how bullish I am on Bitcoin. Right now, there is some FUD around, oh, Bitcoin's now working congested. The miners are making a lot. They must be dumping, right? But that's the thing. They're not. The miners are not going away. Look at it. Volume from miners to exchanges. Look at it. There's no, there's, there's no movement. None whatsoever. Yeah, there's a few spikes there or there, but ultimately you could see that. Look on the very right hand side where we are. No spikes. Miners do not want to sell. They sell only when they must, when they are paying for their operations. But for the most part, miners continue to hoard all the Bitcoin they're mining. They power the network, make it very secure. In fact, the most secure, most decentralized network on earth, right? It's a little congested right now. But ultimately, Bitcoin is the way, is the way. This is what we have to look forward to short term. Long term, I already told you, money's going to pivot into Bitcoin. And that funnel's going to get bigger and bigger. But short term, you know what? This is what we have to look forward to. A lot of similarities to 2019. Very, very similar. Okay, not exactly, of course. Right, but very similar. So it's just a matter of time before Bitcoin makes its next leg up. So I'm looking forward to it, and you guys need to hold strong. But in the meantime, we got a lot. We got a lot of this happening. Okay, BRC20, the new standard for Bitcoin, for ordinals, and for meme coins skyrocketing skyrocketing i didn't even know this but ordi which is actually a a new token right that's actually for the ordinals that's actually tradable on the exchanges surprisingly it took a dump today for some reason but ordinals the new token is actually tradable i did not know that i thought this only existed on bitcoin but no it's actually you, you can trade on the exchanges but nevertheless this is the reason why uh, there's a lot of congestions right now. And, and ultimately, I think this is a good thing for Bitcoin. Short term, probably not causing people to wait for their transactions. But long term, it's just, it's just opening up another use case for Bitcoin. Okay, and driving more people. And look at BRC20 tokens, which... Okay, just look at this list. Okay, this is all the, the meme coins. You guys have seen like Pepe and others... That's all ERC-20 based, right? What about the meme coins that's BRC-20 based? Look at these. They're skyrocketing one. Like already right now, it's at 411 million. And then you got Pepe that, yes, a BRC-20 Pepe that's worth 53 million and so forth. And look at a 24-hour volume. They are pretty much all in the green. People are flocking to these BRC meme coins and this is the reason why bitcoin's network is a little congested right will this continue forever i don't know will there be a, some kind of upgrade to bitcoin right or maybe there's a layer, a layer two that comes out or or some kind of hybrid storage solution i don't know at this point i don't actually quite know but i do know this is generating a lot a lot of interest to bitcoin and overall that's a very positive thing. All right. Now, what else is going on in the space? Well, there is some Cosmos news. I know a lot of you guys are Cosmos fans, so that's good. Uh, Cosmos has been talking about this replicated security because, you know what, it's expensive and complicated to come out with your own L1. <coughs> so Cosmos has this new feature called replicated security. It's actually a way to... to uh, to uh, give more value to Atom too. So L1s like this one, Neutron, will be the first chain that could rent that could rent security from the main chain, which is Cosmos, right? Uh, that's actually kind of interesting. But it gives, again, more use case for Atom. So it makes it more important. And hopefully this kind of fixes the token economics a little bit for Atom. But also, in addition, they are coming out with liquid staking because one of the the big new new uh, nuisance, I guess, for Cosmos is the fact that you can't unstake for 21 days. Most chains, like three to seven days. If you unstake Cosmos, you got to wait 21 stinking days, 
right? But they're going to introduce liquid staking so that you can lit on you, you could do liquid staking and take on synthetic version right away. So that's pretty positive. That's pretty positive. And also, this is what Cosmos looks like. You got a whole bunch of L1s within the ecosystem, and it's growing. And some of the biggest ones you guys have heard of before. Uh, Injective, um, Secret. You have Crypto.com, Axlar, and Osmosis, and there's many others that are within the space, right? So... It's a big ecosystem and only getting bigger. And this is showing all the communication, IBC, inner blockchain communications that's going around everywhere right now. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, what else is going on? Cardano, Charles Hoskinson, not a fan of XRP community. They continue to mock and hate him, according to Charles Hoskinson. I don't know the exact history there. But it has something to do with something that Charles said before in terms of why XRP or why Ripple is being sued. And ever since then, the community does not like him. I don't know why. Does it even matter? I don't know. I don't even know why it matters. But I thought I'd bring it up because there are still a lot of whales buying, despite the fact Cardano has been a little weak recently, but kind of like Bitcoin. The, the the strength of the ADA holders, strong, very, very strong. And they are getting ready to launch their Hydra, or they actually they did launch their verse Hydra, but basically they're going to launch a whole bunch of chains that will scale Cardano infinitely. Right now, Cardano is not very scalable. Not very fast. It can handle about 250 transactions. But the whole point of Hydra is you can have a whole bunch of side chains. And then that will basically make it so that, you know, Cardano can scale infinitely. As far as I know, that's the plan, right? So, uh, so it's coming. It, it, it's coming. So once Cardano can scale, well, then maybe this DeFi ecosystem the TVL, you know, all the good stuff that the other chains enjoy, maybe they're going to come in, in waves to Cardano. And ultimately, that just go help Cardano, right? So whether or not XRP guys like Charles doesn't matter. This is happening. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I saw this. Bitrix files of bankruptcy. This is no surprise. I don't know of anyone that uses Bitrix. But recently, they announced that, you know, they're being sued by the SEC. They're exiting the U.S., and I think they just called it quits. They probably think that the SEC lawsuit is going to take up all their money. So they're just, they're just giving up. It's sad. Exchange that's forced to close down due to none other than Gary Gensler. That's the bottom line. Gary decided to sue Bittrex saying, oh, you have some securities. Right, you have some securities within, um, out of nowhere. So that's gonna be a costly battle, and they're just calling it quits pretty much. I don't know if they're gonna shut down. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. But you know what? It's a uh, it's a sad, sad day. All right. Uh, outside of those things, that's pretty much it today. We saw a little weakness. A little weakness. Um, Bitcoin fell down, unfortunately, below 28,000. But, of course, we have seen this. If you zoom out, you realize, yeah, we have seen this before. All over here around 27,000. We fell down to 27,000 here, right? We fell down once again. Right now, there's still a little volatility. But overall, we're still moving sideways. We're still holding strong. And the fact that Janet Yellen is saying that the U.S. is out of money and calling CEOs personally... And warning that that Armageddon is coming. These are all no good. And it should strengthen your resolve and conviction, right, uh, for Bitcoin. So that's all. That is all. All right, let's do some uh, Q&A. Hey, Lakers are go play tonight. Did they just start? I think they just
All right. Let's see here. Let's see what I missed. Shell Fiend sent some super chat and then retracted it. Let's see. Scrolling, scrolling. The mad scientist says all she is doing is undermining the trust of the USD. Well, that's that's exactly the case. Uh, Christo, I'm not gonna be ch- I'm not gonna be checking that new meme coin. Um. Time to watch the Lakers game. I want to watch them destroy Golden State. Uh, Let's see. Pat Markey says, so they print trillions and they run out of cash. How? Because right now they're not allowed to print more. That's the key. They cannot print more until the debt ceiling is raised. So that's like a self-governing rule. That's why they need this to be raised. Otherwise, they can't print more. Hey, XRP Army is uh, is trending. Uh, do I ever worry? You mean about Bitcoin? No. No. If you understand what Bitcoin is all about, then you would not worry as well. What happens if uh, Gary comes out and says ETH is a security? What will happen if $250 billion gets wiped? It won't. It won't. Uh, there will be a long lawsuit. Ethereum Foundation will defend it. Ethereum Foundation is no slouch either. Um, it will be a long battle. It will. De- Ethereum will take some damage. I think a lot of U.S. exchanges will delist Ethereum if that's the case. Or maybe they'll come together and fight Gary together. Maybe all the major U.S. exchanges put all their money together in a pool to fight Gary at that point. Because that would be a major, major thing. I don't think that's going to happen because Gary would have done it already. And the fact that he hasn't makes me think that there's something that's pro, pro, uh, preventing him from doing so. Nathan, appreciate that. Big super chat. Appreciate you. Um, I like water. Says, tired of my super chats getting rejected. I, I'm not rejecting your super chats. <laughs> but you get to say, you get to say what, what you're thinking about. Great DCA opportunity. I don't disagree with that. Uh, whenever there is some weakness, I mean, just some. Think, I mean, look at it this way, right? Look at the seven-day performance for Bitcoin. Only down 1%, right? Last 30 days, down 1%. So do we really dump? No. We, unfortunately, we did lose some of our gains, right? But, you know, short-term volatility is still there, still exists. Uh, unfortunately for the alts, though, alts are not holding that well. Alts are losing strength. A lot of the alts, you know, money is being shifted. A lot of that money may have shifted into Pepe and some of the other meme coins that have done well recently. That could be the case. But, you know, the, the thing is, at least Pepe brought some excitement to the space, right? You got to you gotta give them credit for that. I know they, they came down quite a bit, but, you know, they could be like Sheeb and, and pull themselves back up. They're still at 58 right now. How how much would a transaction fee be to move one Bitcoin from Coinbase to Cold Wallet? How much over would I need to keep my Bitcoin whole? I you could test. I mean, if you enter it, I'll tell you in your wallet. I mean, or in Coinbase. I mean, it should be no more than like I don't know, twenty bucks or something like that. It shouldn't be that much. Although recently with the ERC BRC twenty stuff, I don't know, but. Check it out. You don't have to send yet. It'll, it'll actually tell you how much it is. 
Uh, Franco, I read what happens if the U.S. defaults, and one of the biggest things is the what? One of the big, biggest things is president from many countries that export stuff to the U.S. will start calling Biden and ask him for when my money. I mean, that's one of the things that's going to happen. Every, every country out there that holds U.S. bonds, the 20, 30-year bonds, right? They're going to be calling and knocking on the door and say, hey, are you going to be able to pay my interest? And are you going to be able to pay me back? All those bonds and notes are IOUs. That's essentially what it is. The U.S. sells them and essentially is borrowing money from these other countries that are buying them, right? Not just you and I, but institutions, but countries. Um, you know, they're basically essentially loaning the U.S. money. And those bonds are just IOUs. So if we can't pay our debts, that means we can't pay the interest of those notes and bonds, which is adding up to a trillion dollars a year, just on interest alone. We're not going to pay that. Our credit ratings go tank, right? And then in the future, these countries are less inclined to buy our bonds anymore. Um, so that's a dot, that's spiral. <laughs> Jason, I will soon. Um, let's see. Do you think Tesla will allow for BDC payments again? I do think so. BDC, there's more. We, I mean, we have stats. There's more miners that's using green energy today than ever before. Over 50% is using green energy. But te I mean, Elon's not really worried about that. He has bigger issues with Twitter right now. So he has to solve that first before, uh, before he's go implement Bitcoin payments again. The CPI number is coming out on Wednesday. So there's a possibility that is a catalyst once again. Um, if the CPI inflation data shows that we go below 5% in a substantial way, that will be very, very positive. And, and Chair Powell would love to see that because he does not want to raise rates anymore. But if somehow the inflation data shows we went up in April, that would be the absolute worst thing ever because the market already priced in. Basically, there's no more rate hikes. And that means there's a possibility that there will be another one. And that would be very bad. So we'll see what happens on Wednesday. Grome Executive. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. I kind of got used to it. But I agree with you. Orban, do you think it's okay for people to call Bitcoin future money when 500,000 transactions cannot go through? However, future money is trillion a day. BDC is a gold. I understand, but money. First of all, uh, there's no need for Bitcoin to be future money. It could be a reserve currency. It could be a reserve. It could be a store of value. That's what I think it should be and will be. You could use stable coins. You could use stable coins. You could use other currencies for day-to-day -day transactions. They're better suited for it. There's many that's created for that reason. But also, also, just to just to bring it back to Bitcoin, you could also use the Lightning Network, which most exchanges, most wallets do not use. Okay? So don't discount Bitcoin. Just discount. I mean, yes, don't. <laughs> Don't rule out Bitcoin for that reason alone, but ultimately, it doesn't need to replace the dollar, right? It just needs to be the ultimate store of value. It's where you park your dollar when you don't want to spend it. It's what appreciates and outperforms inflation, yet not controlled by banks or governments. So Bitcoin does not need to be the master of everything. It doesn't. It just to me needs to be the ultimate store of value. That's it. So don't get the two, two things confused. But with that said, Lightning Network still exists, and it could grow to something much bigger than what it is now. 
So maybe it can exist like that as a medium exchange, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, Darren, watch Ren Money Game Part Two on YouTube. I, I, I don't even know what that is. Ren, what is that? All right, I'm going to wrap it up. So, Janet Yellen warns that bad, bad, bad days are coming if we don't <laughs> raise the debt ceiling. Uh, if that doesn't scare you, then I don't know what will because she painted it in this very, very bleak picture. We're out of cash. We can't pay our debts. We need to raise more money. Uh, we need to print more money. We need to raise that debt ceiling ASAP. So this shows exactly why we need Bitcoin, why we need something better. Okay. So smash the like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early, 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Go Lakers, and I will see you guys later. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.